What's up guys, Joe Elements here once again. I hope you're doing well and um, you're surviving in this lockdown. Fingers crossed very soon um, this lockdown will be lifted and so we'll be able to go out and enjoy the creativity outdoors in the sunshine of this upcoming summer. Now, um, until then, this is how I paid for my £6,000 camera. So many of you knows me as a filmmaker um, based in the UK. If you don't, I am based in the UK currently in Bedfordshire to be precise. And um, a little bit about my background, I've been in filmmaking for over 10 years now and also been doing a lot of music videos here and there. Um, but that's not very relevant right now. But the main thing is how I actually managed to pay for my £6,000 Canon 1DX Mark III. This goes way far back to um, probably about five years ago where I was looking at getting my hands on my first RED camera. So um, before then I was using the Blackmagic production camera and prior to that it was the Blackmagic cinema camera and prior to that it was the Canon 1DC and prior to that it was the Canon 550D, the T2i. So I have come a long way um, starting with Sony DP70 which was my very first um, camera that I actually owned. And um, so it got to that point where I needed to get my hands on a proper cinema camera. Um, I'm not saying that the Black Magics were no good, it was, but um, at that time, um, the hype about red was so real, everyone wanted to get their hands on a red. I didn't have the budget, I didn't have the means to um, actually purchase that camera, but, um, having a very understanding wife she literally just loaned me um, the money to pick up um, one of these red cameras and um, believe it or not this was a very insane purchase um, I looked everywhere within the UK to see if I would find one at that time I was specifically looking at the red scarlet because the epics were very expensive at that time and um, the scarlets were going for somewhere between um, 7,000 and 9,000 pounds depending on what uh, comes with it and so um, I found this particular one that was based in Chicago and um, that was for £7,800 or so. So what I did is I contacted the people, um, the seller, and um, he told me that he can ship it, which is not a problem. And by the way, I'm talking about eBay. He'll be able to ship it, it's not a problem. So he did the calculations for me in terms of shipping and insurance and for it to be um, posted over here to the UK. Um, the taxes, the taxes alone on that camera at that time, it was almost £3,000 just on the tax. And when I calculated that, that would have been just ridiculous, buying a camera for 7,000 and then paying um, 2,000 plus almost 3,000 pounds on taxes and insurance. So what I then decided to do was um, to go out and look for um, a flight ticket that was relatively cheap. And so I found a, a ticket in and out. In fact, it was a round trip um, ticket and um, I didn't mind because it was just me carrying um, a backpack to pick up a red camera and so they didn't have luggages or anything so it wasn't a big deal. I found um, a round trip uh, ticket uh, which cost me around £600 in all and so I booked that over the weekend so um, I left the UK on a Friday night and then got to um, the US um, on a Saturday morning and then that Saturday night, I left the US and got back here on Sunday morning. And so that's how I got my hand on my first ex very expensive camera gear, which was the Red Scarlet MX at that time, which is about five years ago, as I said. And that was um, 7,800 pounds there and about. And so moving on from there, my technique was that I'll make sure that I do make my money back on that um, purchase and also uh, pay back 
uh, my wife, the money that she loaned me. What I then had to do is work a lot on music videos because they paid a lot more better and quicker as well. It was a quicker turnaround. So um, what I did is I was doing a regular trip from UK to um, Africa to do music videos for clients. And so from doing that, I was able to recruit that 7,000, almost 8,000 pounds back out of this project that I did in Africa. And so um, I reimbursed my wife with that money. And then since then, that red had become a profit with any other work that I did. So I owned the red for about a year. And so I had paid off my debts, should I say. And then um, my next thing is I wanted to get something a bit better than the Scarlet MX because obviously you've used it for a while. I see people shooting on the Epic MX and the high frame rate, the 5K footage. It was just ridiculously nice. So uh, my aim and my target was to get my hands on one of those Epics. So, um, Eventually, what I did is at a time that the Epic price was going down, I pushed out my Scarlet and managed to get rid of it for around £7,000. So I literally just lost £800. Well, technically, it was not a loss because I had paid all the debts. So I sold it for £7,000. From there on, I found a Red Epic um, for the same amount, £7,000, and I put that money back into there. So the Red Epic, I used it for about two years, and then from there on, I moved on to the Red Scarlet Dragon, which was another 5K, but just the fact that it had a Dragon sensor. I just wanted to test the waters, just wanted to find um, something that was nice, that I liked. Uh, another thing about me is I don't like keeping gears for too long, especially when I've made money back. I always want to um, be up to speed with um, the latest technology and so on. Um, I got the red Scarlet Dragon. I owned that for probably about um, a year, if not around um, 11 months or so, 10, 11 months. And then on there, I sold it again because I wasn't quite satisfied with the footage that I was getting out of it. Maybe it was um, user error, I don't know, but um, somewhat I still preferred the Epic's footage. So I sold the Dragon um, for £7,000 and then I picked up the Epic for £5,000. So you could see that as I was upgrading and downgrading, I managed to keep that same amount that I was investing into these cameras. So the Epic, the final Epic that I had, I picked it up for about 5000 which was um, a working kit as well. And um, I used that for probably about three months or so. And then um, I heard about the Canon C200, um, which was obviously shooting raw light. So the capability was very, very close to what the RED gives, with the exception of the high frame rate in 5K. And then also the 5K compared to the C200, which was 4K. Uh, my main aim for switching to the Canon C200 um, was just because I had used a RED cameras for so many years and um, the weight had just dawned on me. It's like I wanted something a bit lighter, a bit more easier to run and gun with, a bit more um, quicker to set up and so on. So um, when I heard about the C200, my aim was to get my hands on one of those C200s. It took a while, but I managed to get rid of the Red Epic and which was actually sold for £5,000. So I try my best, as I said, to always remain within that budget so that I don't have to add too much or lose out too much. Um, the C200, I picked it up um, probably for like a week maximum, maximum. It arrived, I liked it, it felt somewhat not comfortable um, because I'm so used to that heavyweight red cameras, the SMC1s, and um, also um, the weight of the C200 somewhat felt um, very plasticky, very cheap to me. Um, I tested the footage, the footage was nice, but I was not really satisfied with the 4K footage coming out of that, comparing it to the um, Red Epic. And so during that time, Canon had also announced the Canon 1DX Mark II, which is the one I'm shooting with right now, which shoots 5.5K RAW and that is full raw, that's not raw light. And so I figured um, at that time I had the EOS R and then I had the, um, the C200. And so I was thinking when I have to go on set, I always have to carry two cameras with me, one for stills and one for 
um, video. And so having used the Canon 1DX Mark II before, which I forgot to mention, um, that was alongside the Red um, Dragon um, at that time. I had the 1DX Mark II, which was 4K as well. And so having used that before, uh, knowing the ergonomics on that and the footage that was coming out of that and hearing that Canon has released the 1DX Mark III with 5.5K RAW. It's not raw light like the C200, so it's a full raw um, image. Uh, I thought to myself straight away, I need to get my hand on that 1DX Mark III. And so we're still talking about that week that I just received the Canon C200. So right there and then I listed the C200 um, with less than um, 130 hours on there. And I listed it to get rid of it. So this is the only time that I lost out um, a whopping 800 pounds. So luckily I found someone that was interested in a C200 and they purchased the C200 from me. And right there and then, I had guarded the money that I needed to pay for the 1DX Mark III. Just because I lost out about 800 pounds on the C200, I needed to sell certain things out of my gear that I don't use. So this is something that I want you to keep in mind. You will always have something sitting around in the garage, in the studio that you technically don't use. So what I did is I pushed them all out on Facebook marketing place and luckily enough, most of the items were sold and I managed to gather the balance of what I needed to pay for this 6,000 pounds camera. So I placed an order for the 1DX Mark III, which came up to 5,700 pounds. And so I still had about 2,000 pounds left um, to spend on memory card. As we are aware, the 512 gig CF Express cards are very expensive. And so when I purchased the 1DX Mark III, I was offered the card reader and one of the CF Express card for 400 pounds. And so adding that to um, the 5,700, I had just a little bit spent over 6,000 pounds on um, one CF Express card and a card reader and a full operating Canon 1DX Mark III. And so I still had some money left and I was figuring, okay, since, um, I'm going to be shooting in raw constantly. Why not invest that balance that I've got into another um, CF Express card? So what I did then, I purchased two CF Express cards. That gives me a little bit over a terabyte worth of CF Express card to be able to record raw. Now, as I said in the beginning of this video, I shoot a lot of music videos. I shoot a lot of feature films and um, photography. So those two cards, I would never fill it up when I'm shooting the feature. I have um, a dumping external hard drive that I normally use. I've reviewed that on my channel here. And so I don't need to shoot in 4K to save up space. That's it for me. I hope um, this helps you with how I managed to purchase this Canon 1DX Mark III. Um, maybe that technique will work for you as well. Just look around in your studio. There are tons of stuff lying around that you probably don't use. Um, get rid of it. Pick up a brand new lens that you know you, you need and you don't have the money for. Or pick up another camera if you know that you need and you don't have the money for just recycle your gear that's it for me guys stay tuned and i'll catch you on the next one peace